Hey, this is a Niche to Meet You podcast. I'm Leslie, and I absolutely love to tell you about little-known niche subcultures. I hope you love hearing about them. If you do, just imagine our take on professional Santas. We want to do a full mini-series, but to be honest, it's a really hard and immense undertaking, like a part-time job. Something that as indie creators, we can't actually fund ourselves. So we launched a crowdfunding campaign to bring you into the process. Check out the link in the show notes. And hey, while you're there, we would love to hear your feedback. Have you joined us since the Apple knew a noteworthy pick? If so, welcome. Let us know what you think. We love reading your thoughts and it makes this show so much better when we know what real listeners are thinking and feeling. So tell us about your niche or what these episodes have made you think about. The link for the crowdfunding campaign and a link to email us are in the show notes now. Thank you for lending your ears and minds to this project. I'm grateful to you. We all have our own personal canon of great YouTube videos. There's one I turn to when I need a good happy cry, and it's the shortest, at around 60 seconds. It starts out insignificantly, and it quickly turns into the most amazing athletic performance I've ever seen. And hey, I've even watched the Chicago Bulls documentary about the team in the 90s, the one with Michael Jordan. Yeah, this video, it beats that. It even beats my other favorite YouTube sport clip, Sean White's 2010 Olympic gold medal run, when he unnecessarily did the double McTwist because he'd already won the gold. He did it just for fun and he nailed it. Still in all, this 60 second video beats even that. It's a final round dog agility run, and it's the best I've ever seen. And listen, I do tend to watch a lot of them. This one features Tex, a border collie in the 2015 Masters Agility Championship at the Westminster Dog Show. The handler is barking cues while Tex navigates the course. The dog starts slowly at first, and the crowd and the commentators are unimpressed, almost yawning. But then she hits the weave poles. And pandemonium breaks out. Look at those poles. Look at those weed poles. Here we go. Through the shoot. Here's the fun part. Get down. Get that contact. Get out of there. Go. Into the tunnel. Come on. Here we go. Tex. And Tex will win it. That was awesome. The handler is crying. Tex is crying in the only way a border collie can. I am crying. We are all crying. You might look at a champion like Tex and assume your own couch potato pup couldn't possibly compare. It takes fine-tuned breeding and attention to compete at that level. But it's not reserved for the canine elite. Oh no! The average rescue pup can do it too, and on this episode, we meet one for ourselves. I'd like you to meet Toast. Aren't you sweet? Aren't you sweet, Toast? Feel free to push her off. I kind of don't want to. Okay, no, that's that's totally fine. Because she's quite cuddly (laughs) and very soft. Hi, pretty girl. Toast is her given name, but, you know, she also goes by... Toastino's Pizza Rolls, which then somehow morphed into Pizza Girl. Sometimes just pizza, and then also Roller Toaster. Together with her human companion, Amy, Toast is actively training to be a dog agility competitor, and it all started with Amy's long-lost childhood dream. So as a kid, I was obsessed with Animal Planet and kind of all things dog. Had a pound puppy growing up and would be like out in the backyard trying to create things to do with her and things like that. And then when Amy grew up, she came to learn that there's actually an entire subculture of people who do this and not necessarily to compete. They just take classes at local clubs just because they want to. It's not just what we see on TV. It's a hobby that people engage in. And it's a fun dog culture that people want to watch your dog for 30 seconds, do something really fun and exciting, and either celebrate the success or also just like laugh at the failure when they just keep shooting a tunnel over and over and over again and don't want to do anything else. And then Amy met Toast. Uh, So Toast is two and a half years old now and how it began was working on sits and stays and downs. I was like, okay, she's good at this. We were watching the Westminster dog show with some of their agility. (laughs) Toast was sitting there like on the couch with my boyfriend and I and we were all watching it and we were like, all right, Toast, watch what they're doing. You all turn and look at Toast and Toast is just 
Yes, zoned in. Yes. And so then it was just like, let's try this and see what we can make happen. So. Do you think she has any personality traits that make her well suited for it? Or does it really... In her like little puppy picture, she's like doing these giant like open mouth poses, which looks nothing like the rest of the puppies or is like sticking her tongue out. So we just refer to her as a good time girl. It turns out that Toast, with her open mouthed smiles and good natured spirit, was the perfect dog for reviving Amy's dreams. Toast is a Britney, and so they were originally bred out of Britney, France. And they're little hunting dogs. And so she she has a lot of the drive for it. She loves a good treat. She loves a ball. And so it's like, all right, we've got the motivation there. But it really does come down to the individual of do, do they like it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All the kisses. Kisses break. <laughs> sure. Sure. Kisses break. So Amy and Toast took the first step by joining the local National Dog Training Club. We, we joined the club because they offer classes to help get better. You know, for example, we haven't learned weave poles yet. That will come as we continue to advance. But it's also just a great built-in community with it and the celebration of just like dogs and dog sports. Five-year-old Amy, I think, would, <laughs> would just be ecstatic. Is there like one main memory that you have of feeling like I'm a part of this group? I think just anytime there's just that celebration of success, whether it's been for Toast of like, hey, cool, we've earned a new title, or whether it's for somebody else's dog that it's like, man, y'all have had a really tough time like coming out of that corner and hitting that that next jump. And that it's like they finally get it. And so it's really fun because, you know, you're you're celebrating again, but both the dog and and the human side of like, ah, uh, yes, they got it. You know, we we can struggle through whatever our like puzzle problem is that we're struggling with and we, we can figure it out. Yeah. So with most hobbies, community with and encouragement from the others involved do bring satisfaction and belonging, even if we aren't that great at the thing itself. Like, dear Toast, she struggles with agility at times, especially outside with the dangers of strange birds entering the yard. Like, bird squirrel. She has to do her bird patrol first. Or when okay. she's distracted and plays with the tunnel instead of running Come through it. No, you missed it. And you pulled it. You pulled the stakes out. <laughs> oh, man. No, it's a rolling tunnel. But despite distractions and casual meanders through a tunnel on a timed run, Toast is improving one small certification at a time, which will help her as she tries new things in some unexpected ways. Yes, so she earned her canine good citizen title. Those basic obedience skills are also really helpful with agility because agility is off leash. And again, she's a bird dog. So if we're inside the club just practicing and somebody else is rewarding their dog with a squeaky toy, she's like, oh wait, that's what I want to get after. And so having those abilities just to be like, nope, come on, re- refocus is, is really important. There's a very sharp listening skill there too. How does the handler keep all of this straight? It's also funny sometimes when you have like a quote bad run that you realize like the dog actually did what I asked them to do. Like my hand wasn't up high enough or I didn't shoot my hand directly out to give a good signal to them. Most of it's training for the handler. Yes. Because they're just listening to you. Right. No matter what, whether Toast and Amy perfectly compete a run, hit all the marks on a frame or compete at a show... The purpose of this activity is still being fulfilled because the whole exercise has a larger purpose, even if it seems like there's no progress. Amy remembered learning this in a class she took with a champion agility handler. It was a day when she and Toast weren't having a great training session. Yeah, I forget what I was getting frustrated on, something with Toast Heel, and it was just like, come on, like you know how to do this. And she was just like, hey, pause, take a deep breath. She's having fun. It's got to stay fun. And it wasn't like a, hey, like you're doing something wrong or you're bad. But it was like, remember why we're here. And she had one of the number three dogs in the country for obedience. That it was just like, hey, whether you're at the most basic entry or whether you're up at that level, as long as you keep them having fun and the fact that you're there for them and you're there to have fun together at the center of what you're doing, you can't really be wrong. What I hear Amy saying is interesting because we see how community of dog agility classes, coaching, competitions, it benefits its participants on an individual level, unrelated to the thing itself. So here's what I mean. Dog agility for Amy is a true hobby. It's what she does once or twice a week. Her day job is one that's known to have a 54% increase in suicide risk 
over the national average. Its workers have double the amount of depression than the national average. They're four times as likely to sleep less than six hours per day than the general population. They have the poorest cardiovascular disease health profile of any occupation. Amy is a police officer, a cop, and she's found that dog agility with toast has given her coping skills in a unique way. Things like concerts are kind of stressful because it's like there are tons of people. But with dog stuff, it's like I don't need to pay attention to like where are the exit points, what's going on. When we're working on something, it's like, hey, my focus is on you. But work stress isn't isolated to law enforcement officers. You might be listening and relate to this personally. In fact, Toast and Amy have met companions whose work in dog agility helps them relieve stress from jobs of all types just because they've got something else to focus on. I think that's true no matter what your career is, is that sometimes we all have that baseline like work level thoughts. Like there are some really brilliant scientists that do these really intense cancer research trials. There are people who work for the Department of State that it's been really interesting to learn what somebody's job is. But that's like the second or third or fourth thing that you learn about somebody because what you're first learning about them is like, hey, what is your dog's name? And what are the other 10 million ridiculous names that they get called? And so that's, I feel like, where kind of those hobbies and sense of community for me come in is that I have something that whether we're in a class or signing up for an event, something like that, it gives you something to look forward to that's outside of of your everyday nine to five. It's it's just nice to have an outlet that has nothing to do with work and that it's also just gives me dedicated time to, to hang with my dogs. Which is really all Amy ever wanted, even from childhood. That's the amazing thing about hobbies and these niche subcultures we involve ourselves with, right? Our dreams, made without knowing what the future will hold, can sometimes necessarily give out under the weight of adulthood. Adulting. This is appropriate. With age comes responsibility, which comes with assessing priorities. And these are important things. But they're heavy things. And sometimes we gotta lay them down. And our hobbies can give us opportunity for coping and learning. Like how the small victories on the course with Toast have helped Amy to find other little wins in her life. Uh, Like if I am having a really stressful day of whether it's like, oh man, I got to eat my favorite thing for lunch or whether it's just like, man, that coffee that I had was really great or oh look, the plant in my office has a new leaf. Not Pollyanna-ing it of like, oh, everything's sunshine, but like, hey, there's, we we can still find something good. It's It's a way of like bringing yourself into the moment. Yes. Because the small good things are still good things. Right, exactly. Toast may still have a lot to learn. There are still plenty of certifications to earn, more jumps to make, A-frames to perfect. But what she's mastered is perhaps the most important accomplishment of all. To offer Amy respite and delight. Which, in so doing, actually provides the same things to Toast herself. And that reciprocal benefit of what Toast gets from this activity and what Amy gets from Toast participating in it, it really shows in moments like this. I think when Toast finally nailed going over a jump, coming out of a tunnel, and getting it sequenced correctly, that was that was a, re- a really big moment. And again, I love that big moments with this, it can happen outside of the ring. And then obviously, you know, her just getting her new canine good citizen title, that was also huge. Hey, but man. yeah. Toasty. Ready? Tunnel. Tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. Yes, 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 yes. Toast. You are awesome. You do a good job. You work so hard. <laughs> that is so fun. I like the camera you. Okay. You've been listening to a vignette episode of the Niche to Meet You podcast. I'm Leslie, creator and producer of this project. My blind spot checker and editor of sorts is Chris Thiessen. The theme music you hear under you is by Abigail Flowers, with additional music provided by Blue Dot Sessions. Rachel Hardiker designed our art. And you can join us online, join our email list, see what we're up to at niche to meet you.show. And follow us on Instagram. It's at niche to meet you.show. If you liked what you heard today, leave a review and let other people know why they should take their time to listen. Thanks for being with us today. 
We'll see you next time. Hey, listener. So many of you have joined us since Apple placed us in the new and noteworthy section in the browse homepage of the Apple Podcast app. And we are so immensely grateful for that editorial endorsement. And we just want to thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking the time. Our team would love to hear from you personally. You can use our fancy new email address, hello at niche to meet you dot show, to shoot us a message. Tell us about your favorite niche interests and why we should cover it, or just say hi. We'd love to hear from you. As an independent creator, it really helps to know that this project is resonating with complete strangers. Thank you for spending your time with this show. Okay, that's enough for me. Enjoy the episode.